President Trump sat down for an interview with Chris Wallace, the only reporter at Fox News who isn't trying to become the next press secretary. And you can tell that he isn't because this was no softball interview. In fact, it was pretty much a masterclass in how not to let Trump get away with his usual bullshit. Like, you know how Trump is always bragging about how well the United States is doing with the coronavirus? Well, here's what happened when he tried that move with Chris Wallace. I think we have one of the lowest mortality rates true, in the sir. world. We, well, we, we're gonna we take have a, a look. We had 900 deaths on a single day. We will this, take a look. This week. Ready? I, you you oh, can check you it out. Could you please get me the mortality rate? Yeah. Kaylee's right here. I heard we had one of the lowest, maybe the lowest mortality I, rate anywhere in the world. You have the numbers, please? <laughs> because I heard we had the best mortality rate. The case rate of similarly situated countries, as uh, Dr. Burks points out, and this is Number right. number one low mortality rate. Right? I hope you show the scenario because it shows what fake news is all about. Okay, okay go I don't ahead. think I'm fake news, but okay. I will we'll put well, our there you are. we'll put our stats you on. You said we had the worst mortality rate in the world, I and we have the best. The all right, it's mortality. a little complicated, but bear with us. We went with numbers from Johns Hopkins University, which charted the mortality rate for 20 countries hit by the virus. The U.S. ranked seventh, better than the United Kingdom, but worse than Brazil and Russia. The White House went with this chart from the European CDC, which shows Italy and Spain doing worse, but countries like Brazil and South Korea doing better. Other countries doing better, like Russia, aren't included in the White House chart. Oh, you see? Chris Wallace did two things right there that Trump absolutely hates. He proved him wrong and he made him do homework. And the funniest part about this to me isn't that Trump used a bullshit chart to prove that America has the best mortality rate. It's that even on a bullshit chart, it's still not true. I mean, if you just want any chart that's gonna show how well you're doing, man, just go all the way with it. And that wasn't the only time Trump tried to bring receipts that he didn't actually have. Here he is attempting to prove that Joe Biden said he wants to defund the police. They want to defund the police and Biden wants to fund, defund no, he, the police. Sir, he does not. Look, he signed a charter with Bernie Sanders. I will get that one, just like I was right on the mortality rate. Did you read the charter that he agreed to? It says to nothing about the, defunding the oh, police. Oh, really? It says abolish, it says defund. Let's go. All right. Get, well, me, you, get me the charter, please. All right. Because so you've got to start studying for these. He interviews. says defund the police. He says, defund the police. They talk about abolishing the police. They talk about illegal I, I, aliens I look, I look pouring. Forward, I look forward to seeing that. Like Sir, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you on any of those. I'm disagreeing about defund police. The White House never sent us evidence that Bernie Biden platform calls for defunding or abolishing police because there is none. <laughs> oh man, I don't care how many times I watch it. It is priceless seeing Trump flail around trying to find a fact that he made up. And it actually shows you how his brain just kind of mixes up everything he reads into one big information smoothie. Because clearly, he read that Biden wants to abolish immigration detention, and he also read that Biden wants police reform, and then his brain just mashed them up into Biden wants to abolish the police. I kind of want to give Trump a book to read just to see how he would explain it back to me. Green eggs and ham. There's a tragic story about two eggs that want to marry a ham. They want to get married. They love each other. But again, another great fact check from Chris Wallace. And I gotta admit, I love Chris Wallace, the journalist, but Chris Wallace, the dad, must be a nightmare. His kids are probably coming home like, yeah, school is fine. You know, we just did a bunch of work. I just put my head down and worked. Well, actually, I have photo evidence here of you spending all day under the bleachers vaping while making out with Samantha. And honestly, it got to the point where Chris Wallace wasn't just fact-checking Trump, he was fact-shaming him. Because for years now, Trump has been bragging about what a good score he got on some cognitive ability test. And yesterday, Wallace flat out told Trump that his test score ain't shit. In the Fox poll, they asked people, who is more competent? Who's got, whose mind is sounder? Biden beats you in that. Well, I tell you what, uh, let's take a test. Let's take a test right now. Let's go down. Joe and I will take a test. Let him take the same test that I took. Incidentally, I took the test too when I heard that you passed it. Yeah, how did it's you do it? Hard, well, it's not the hardest test. No, but the it last- has a picture and it says, what's that? And it's an elephant. No, no, no. You see, that's all misrepresentation. Well, that's what it was on the web. It's all misrepresentation. Because yes, the first few questions are easy, but I'll bet you couldn't even answer the last five questions. I'll bet you couldn't. They get very hard, the last five well, questions. Well, one of them was count back from 100 by seven. 
And let me tell you, if you crazy. couldn't answer, <laughs> you couldn't answer All right, what's the question? many of the questions. I'd get you the test. I'd like to give it. But right. I guarantee you that Joe Biden could not answer those questions. Okay. okay? Uh, you, and you I answered about- all 35 questions correctly. <laughs> wow, guys. This is sort of making me sad right now. Because Trump is trying so hard to claim he's a genius because he passed a test where you have to identify an elephant. Which, let's be honest, even for Trump is too easy. I mean, if they wanted to test Trump, they shouldn't have asked him to identify an elephant. They should have asked him to identify his second daughter. Yeah, that would have been impressive. Is it, is it this one? No, that's Jared, sir. Okay. But I was close, right? And also, counting back from 100 by seven is super easy. Anyone can do it, it's 100. 93, uh, 86. You don't have to be a genius. And you know what, jokes aside, I actually do feel reassured that Trump passed that cognitive test. Because someday, when terrorists threaten to kidnap the Washington Monument, unless the president correctly identifies an elephant, you know Trump's got that shit handled. It's that one, it's the rhino with the long nose. Now, Wallace covered a lot of ground in this interview, but no matter the subject, Trump managed to make it weird. For instance, when Wallace asked Trump about army bases named after Confederate generals, this is what he said. The National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, you have threatened to veto it because in the bill, and this is supported by Republicans as well as Democrats, it would rename army bases named for Confederate generals. We won two world wars, two world wars, beautiful world wars that were vicious and horrible, and we won them out of Fort Bragg. We won them out of all of these forts that now they want to throw those names away. Go to that community where Fort Bragg is in a great state. I love that state. Go to, go to the community. Say, how do you like the idea of renaming Fort Bragg? And then what are we going to name it? You're going to name it after the Reverend Al Sharpton? Okay, I'm sorry, what? Two beautiful world wars? This dude really can't objectify anything. We've had two beautiful, bangable world wars. Totally tens. That is such a dumb thing to say that they didn't even think to put something like that on the cognitive test. Should we ask people about both world wars and see if they find them attractive or not? No, forget it. Nobody's brain is that broken. So the elephant should look like this, yeah? Also, how insulting is it to say that people might rename the bases after L. Sharpton? Of course they should rename it after L. Sharpton. Think about how terrifying that would be for enemy soldiers. Ah, Scheiße, here comes the L. Sharpton Brigade. They're gonna call us out on our racism. We're gonna get so canceled. This almost goes without saying, but there's a giant middle ground between naming bases after Confederate generals and naming them after L. Sharpton. I mean, America has had lots of non-Confederate generals, and Trump should know that. He's fired a lot of them. I mean, you can make any problem sound ridiculous if you pretend L. Sharpton is the only solution. President Trump, we need universal health care. Oh, who's gonna be your doctor, L. Sharpton? But here's the thing. As incredible as it was to see Trump face a real interviewer, nothing Wallace says is gonna convince Trump that he's wrong about anything. Because as Trump showed, even when he is already being proven wrong, he still insists that eventually he's going to be right. Dr. Fauci at the beginning said, this will pass, don't worry about it, this will pass. He was wrong. But you made mistakes too. I guess everybody makes mistakes. I was going to say, you said at one point... I think we're going to be very good with the coronavirus. I think that at some point uh, that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. I'll be right eventually. (laughs) I will I be right eventually. You know, I said, it's going to disappear. I'll say it again. But does it's that dis- going to disappear. Does that discredit and you? I'll be right. Eventually, I'll be right. That's not how being right works. If you guess the wrong answer at trivia, you can't get a point by claiming that eventually one of the answers will be Marge Simpson. But that answer does expose the fundamental truth about Trump. He's much more concerned about being able to say he's right than about actually being right. If coronavirus ends up wiping out the entire planet except for Trump, he'll be standing at a podium all by himself saying, you see folks, it totally disappeared. I was right. Portland, Oregon, the first city to legalize marriage between a bookstore and a bike shop. Portland has now seen more than 50 straight days of Black Lives Matter protests. But over the last few days, something new has been happening with more and more protesters facing off against heavily armed law enforcement 
in some very dramatic ways. Moms gathered singing, please don't shoot me last night, but local media says federal agents again used tear gas, flashbangs, and pepper balls to disperse the crowd. Some people are calling a 53-year-old Navy veteran the Superman of Portland because of how he did not react after being hit by federal officers with batons and then tear gas. I'm sure you've seen this woman who's been dubbed Naked Athena. She showed up at protests, very calm, very confident, wearing nothing but a face mask and a beanie. And just so you know, she's wearing courage, and the police <laughs> did disperse when she just sat there and showed her body. Protesting naked? Now that's bravery. Although, are we sure being naked is part of her protest? I mean, she could just be one of those people who spend so much time in lockdown that they forgot that they have to wear clothes when they leave the house. Again, I'm sorry to everyone in that bodega, all right? I was just popping in to buy some nuts. I didn't mean for everybody to see mine. And how dope are those moms? You know your protest is picking up steam when your mom shows up. My Jeremy wants to fight the system because this guy is a real A-cab, right, Jeremy? Mom, I told you I can defeat fascism by myself, God! What's behind this new wave of protests in Portland? Well, they're reacting to a recent move by the Trump administration that has put the whole city on edge. You see, for months, local officials there had been allowing peaceful demonstrations without too much interference, but President Trump was not happy about that. So he decided to send in the feds which led to scenes like this. A crisis unfolding in Portland, Oregon, after a video surfaced online that showed masked and camouflaged federal agents detaining peaceful protesters. Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum says federal officers are the ones escalating the violence. She's now suing several federal agencies for actions like this. What is going on? We need to know Who are you? Three or four or five of them jumping out of the unmarked vans at night grabbing people off the streets, putting them into their vans. Man, that sounds less like democracy and more like an episode of Narcos. Unidentified soldiers throwing protesters into an unmarked van on the streets of Portland? Like, I don't care who you are. Nothing good has ever come from an unmarked van. It's never like, get in the van, get in the unmarked van. We're going to Disney World. <laughs> and how are people even supposed to tell the difference between being arrested and being kidnapped? Cause I don't know if you've noticed this, but in America, random dudes walk around in camo gear holding guns all the time. I mean, can you tell which of these is a federal officer and which one is doing army man cosplay? Cause I can't. So if you ask me, there's only one solution here. And that solution is that everyone should dress up in camo. That's the only way everyone's gonna be safe. That way, when they come to arrest you and throw you in their van, you can be like, no, I'm arresting you and throwing you in my van. And then things will get so confusing that eventually you get thrown in your own van and you can just drive home. Now, if you're sitting at home wondering, eh, why should I care about this, man? It's happening in Portland. I'm not even a hipster. Well, now Trump says that he's planning to send these secret police to cities all across America. So you might want to get naked and call your mom because shit's about to go down. <music> Kanye West hip-hop superstar and Kim Kardashian's eldest child. Kanye has been promoting a new album slash presidential campaign, and it has not been going great. Kanye West is moving forward with his campaign for president. He held a rally in Charleston, South Carolina yesterday. Arriving on stage with the year 2020 shaved into the back of his head and wearing what appeared to be a military-style vest, West appeared to be putting forward policy proposals on the fly. Everybody that has a baby gets a million dollars or something you have to And at one point, he broke down into tears while describing how he was nearly aborted by his parents. There would have been no Kanye West because my dad was too busy. <laughs> One of the more controversial statements of the night, though, came when he criticized abolitionist Harriet Tubman. Well, Harriet Tubman never actually freed the slaves. She just had the slaves go work for other white people. Y'all, we leaving right now. Okay, this is officially the weirdest hip-hop beef of all time. You gonna go after Harriet Tubman for not getting the slaves better jobs? What was she supposed to do? Run the Underground Railroad and LinkedIn? I mean, I guess congratulations, though. 
You know, Kanye found a campaign hat that black people are even less likely to wear than Trump's. And honestly, guys, I don't know what to make of this. I genuinely don't know what to make of this. You know, but because my takeaway from this event is that Kanye West doesn't seem well. Like, I feel like someone who cares about him needs to take his microphone away. Although ironically, the best person for that job is Kanye. The battle for justice in America continues every single day. But if it seems like there's no end in sight, at least there's progress on some of the smaller issues. Trader Joe's supermarket chain is under fire. It's being urged to change some of the names of its ethnic foods. Over 1,000 people have signed a petition urging the company to rename products labeled Trader Ming's, Trader Jose's, and Trader John Oaks. Trader Joe's says they have been in a years long process of repackaging products and will soon complete the work. We did it! Black Lives Matter. No justice, no peace. And also rename the pasta. But look, I get why people complained about how they were branding the foods in Trader Joe's. Like, let's be honest, you don't have to call something Trader Ming's for them to know that it's Chinese food, right? Just like you don't have to call it Trader Karen's for them to know that it has pumpkin spice in it. So I am glad that they're revamping these labels if this is what people want. And you know, if your company's over 60 years old, it's inevitable. The branding is gonna become problematic at some point. I mean, you should see what Honey Nut Cheerios looked like up until last week. Whew, they were dope. That was problematic. Now, you may be wondering, what happens to all this food after it gets canceled? Like, do they just throw it away? Because, I mean, that seems like a waste. Well, the good news is, there's actually a grocery service that gives you the food you need with all of the racial insensitivity you crave. Are you sad because your favorite problematic brands have been canceled? Aunt Jemima was canceled. Then you need Bigot Basket. Bigot Basket delivers all the brands that you won't find in those PC grocery stores. Products like Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, Build a Walnuts, Tucker Carlson O's, and White Chocolate. Sure, you could buy the same exact food under a different name, but you have a sophisticated palate, and you know food tastes better when it's making someone sad. And to own the libs even more, all our deliveries are packaged in those plastic rings that kill turtles. So order your Bigot Basket today. Use promo code All Lives Matter to get 10% off. Coronavirus. The only thing living its best life in 2020. Over the past 24 hours, multiple states, including Texas and Florida, reported record COVID-19 fatalities. And for everyone who's asking what America is doing wrong, well, one viral photo might offer a clue. A tale of two countries. This picture is going viral for highlighting the difference in COVID-19 responses between the United States and Canada. At the top of your screen, a packed American tour boat at Niagara Falls carrying hundreds of people. You can see them in blue ponchos. The bottom is a Canadian one carrying just a half dozen tourists. They're the ones in red. The images show the two vessels passing each other earlier this month. Yep. Apparently, while Canadian boats at Niagara Falls have a passenger limit of six people, American boats are just bawling out. I mean, just look at how all of those Americans are packed together on that boat. I'm not even sure if that's mist from the waterfall. That could just be everyone coughing. Now look, obviously I'm joking, right? Those people might be safe because they're outdoors in the mist and the wind. I don't know. But still, this photo really is a metaphor for how differently the US is treating this pandemic from all other countries. I mean, of all the things to risk dying for, looking at a waterfall is the worst choice until there's a vaccine. Stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I will say though, I also feel like Canada's being a little too safe. I mean, come on, you guys have free healthcare. Live a little. And by the way, keeping boats from being overcrowded isn't the only thing Canada is doing to stop the spread of corona. The CDC in the Canadian province of British Columbia just released official health guidelines telling Canadians to try using glory holes for safer sex. Because they say the wall stops you from breathing on each other, but the hole keeps the magic happening. And if ever there was a sign, this is how you know coronavirus is really bad. When doctors are like, okay, go stick your dick in a wall, it'll save lives. Now look, I don't know about glory holes, but my personal advice is if you wanna be real safe, Everyone needs to have sex the same way Mike Pence does. What you do is you go in the bedroom first and then you lock the door behind you so nobody else can come in. Sex. Oh, and while we're on the subject, here's another tip. Guys, 
Wear a mask over your balls, okay? It doesn't stop the virus. It's just no one wants to see your balls. They're like the bottom of a cupcake. The party's on top. Just hide that stuff. In other news, football is coming back, but the Washington Redskins are not. Effective immediately, the former Washington Redskins will now be called the Washington football team as they continue to look for a replacement mascot. According to ESPN, this is not the final name of the team, but they needed something in place before games begin this season. A new permanent name and logo is still in the works. I'm sorry, that is the laziest team name I have ever heard. I mean, they renamed a professional football franchise the same way you save phone numbers of people you just met. Uh, karaoke dude with the big ears who sings strange. Uh, okay, woman from the bar. Idiot coworker. Oh, let me change that. Idiot coworker Michael Costa. For real, guys, the Washington football team? That doesn't sound like a professional organization. It sounds like they ran out of cash and now they can only afford the store brand version of team names. It's like when my mom couldn't buy us Cheerios, so instead she bought us oat circles. Oat circles, eat this in the morning. The only silver lining I can see for this name is that it's gonna be very helpful to people who don't follow the NFL. Yeah, cause now when someone asks you who you're rooting for, you can be like, uh, the football team? Yeah, and then you sound like you know what you're talking about. Oh, interesting choice. You're going with the football team. <laughs> yeah, I like when they do the ball. <laughs> but let's move on now to some news that's really out of this world. It's about space. Here this morning, it's an historic space race to Mars, the red planet. China launched its first ever mission to Mars this morning. A six-wheeled robot lifted off on the Long March 5 rocket from the island south of China's mainland. Details are top secret. China's not even releasing the rover's name. It should get there in orbit sometime in February, right behind the rover Hope launched by the United Arab Emirates. That was on Monday. The U.S. expecting to launch its rover, Perseverance, from Cape Canaveral. It'll be next week. They're, they're going to have a traffic jam up there. Wait, 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 wait. Why is everybody trying to go to Mars? I mean, there's never been a movie on Mars that ends well. Best case scenario, you lose a ton of weight because you're on an all-potato diet. Like, that's it. And also, is this the best time for space exploration? Come on, scientists. I know you want to have fun, but we need you focused on the pandemic. Now is not playtime. No Mars until you finish your corona. You finish your corona, scientist. You finish your corona, and then you can have Mars. Don't you look at me like that, young scientist. Moving on to politics. Yesterday, we talked about how a Republican congressman named Ted Yoho called Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a bitch in the halls of the Capitol building. Well, this morning, AOC fired back with both barrels. An mm -hmm. extraordinary moment on the House floor just a few minutes ago. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talking about Republican Congressman Ted Yoho throwing expletives at her. I was minding my own business, walking up um, the steps, and Representative Yoho put his finger in my face. He called me disgusting. He called me crazy. And in front of reporters, Representative Yoho called me, and I quote, a f***ing bitch. And I want to be clear that Representative Yoho's comments were not deeply hurtful or piercing to me because I have worked a working class job. I have waited tables in restaurants. I have ridden the subway. I have tossed men out of bars that have used language like Mr. Yoho's. Mr. Yoho mentioned that he has a wife and two daughters. I am someone's daughter, too. And I am here because I have to show my parents that I am their daughter and that they did not raise me to accept abuse from men. And you know, I don't care what anybody says. I am glad AOC came out on the House floor and said exactly what that congressman said to her, expletives and all. Because if you only hear about the story on the news, You've probably heard them say that Yoho used a derogatory language or an offensive term, or he made a decorum whoopsie. AOC is absolutely right. Time and time again, powerful men hide behind the fact that they have daughters as a way to shield themselves from accusations of sexism. It's almost like these dudes are at their gender reveal parties like, yay, it's pink. Oh man, I'm finally gonna have a political prop to excuse my bad behavior. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life. <laughs> Before we go, I just wanted to remind you that America is facing a nationwide poll worker shortage. And that's because most poll workers are over 60 and coronavirus is still out there so they cannot show up. 
But fewer poll workers means that there are fewer polling stations open, and it means there's gonna be longer lines that not everybody can afford to wait in, especially in communities of color. But now here's the good news. Most poll working is paid. Yeah, yeah, paid. And in some states, you can be as young as 16 to work. Over the past two weeks, we've partnered with Power to the Polls to ask you to be a poll worker, and over 40,000 of you have already signed up. So thank you to every single one of you who are giving your time to save your granny and protect democracy. And if you haven't signed up yet and you wanna make some money, then just go to the link below to learn more.